Today we got Revenant. Wait, are you the right character? I said Revenant. Um, I meant Revenant, not this Eidolon looking thing. Wait a minute. That's Revenant? Well then, that's, uh, kind of awkward. Revenant is the bizarre sentient hybrid fusion. He looks like a sentient, named after vampires, and kind of plays like one. I say kind of. Revenant is a fan favorite for obvious reasons. He can tank. Tank a lot, actually. Almost too much tanking. Revenant, in fact, is the tankiest Warframe in the entire game. And I'm not joking when I say that. Unlike Gauss, who can only resist certain elements, or Rhino with his iron skin health, Revenant can literally face tank anything. And that's all thanks to Mesmer's skin, which is essentially taking Rhino's iron skin, cranking it up to an 11, and then removing all the limitations that iron skin had. And voila, you have Mesmer skin. Mesmer's skin is arguably the most overpowered ability in the entire game. Revenant will not die if this is active. And if you get hit with a status effect like Toxin, your HP is fixed to 2, so you'll literally stay alive as long as this ability is active. And this ability alone has propelled Revenant into the higher tiers of the roster, and once the subsume system was introduced, it was GG's. But a question that never gets addressed is, why? And more importantly, why does Revenant of all frames possess this instant OP button? Revenant is a frame that is so bizarre at face value. His name derives from the vampire Revenants. He looks like a sentient fusion and has abilities that are clearly inspired from vampires. Yet his ultimate is a mere beam dance just like those conculus on Lua. However, this bizarre amalgamation of a Warframe is one of the more popular frames, sitting right under the top 25, and is one of the most used frames for high-end activities like Archon Hunts or Steel Path due to his tank capabilities. He's also extremely easy to use, despite having a very two-dimensional kit, he can outperform a vast majority of Warframes due to his raw tanking powers alone. So with all these questions asked, let's take a deep dive into what Revenant was all about and how we got here in the first place. So, Revenant is a very interesting Warframe. On one hand, Revenant is overpowered. That's just a fact. If you have an ability that will negate damage but also ensures you will always live at 2 health points, that is overpowered. But what makes Mesmer skin even more stronger is the fact that you can recharge it, meaning you can always stay immortal, as long as you have energy. Now on the other hand, Revenant is a Warframe that has received a lot of changes during development from the dev streams, going from a more traditional Revenant-like character, to having a lot of inspiration off the Eidolons, which are undead beings but not the same as vampires or ghouls, essentially undead sentients. Revenant, the name, is based off of undead beings. In folklore, a Revenant is an animated corpse that is believed to have been revived from death to haunt the living. The word Revenant is derived from the old French word, which means the returning. The term Revenant has been used interchangeably with ghosts by folklorists. While some maintain that vampires derive from Eastern European folklore and Revenants derive from Western European, many assert that Revenant is a generic term for the undead. Usually, it's somewhere in the middle, halfway between a mortal and a vampire. Revenant's design is exactly this it's a halfway point. However, it may be a bit confusing since Eidolons aren't really seen as traditional undead beings, but more so lifeless extensions or fragments. His first ability is Enthrall, which lets him control an enemy, which is common for the undead to do. His second ability allows him to reinforce himself, preventing all damage, which is a common trait seen in vampire and ghoul-like beings. And his third ability... Yeah, I don't need to explain how this is related. Vampires literally turn to mist and can shapeshift and morph into different things and elements. However, come to his ultimate, and it's a different story. But that wasn't always the case. You see, when going back to Devstream 112, Revenant was actually much different. And in fact, the idea for him to be inspired and related to a vampire or ghoul was actually Rebecca's idea, who was at the time the head community manager. And the placeholder name they gave him was the Vlad frame. Vlad, 
is Vlad III, commonly known as Vlad the Impaler or Vlad Dracula. The name Dracula, which is now primarily known as the name of a vampire, was for centuries known as the sobriquet of Vlad III. And Vlad's patronymic also inspired the name of Bram Stoker's literary vampire, Count Dracula. Even the placeholder name is that of a vampire, so everything was screaming for Revenant to be a ghoul-like or vampire-inspired frame. What happened? Well, we have to go back to Devstream 112 where we first saw the Vlad frame in action. The Vlad frame was showcased alongside the Sacrifice quest, which introduced the much-anticipated Excalibur Umbra. Umbra was set to launch shortly within the next few weeks, but Vlad was going to be delayed until two more months. On this stream, they revealed his four abilities and showcased the work in progress. Vlad's first ability was very similar to Enthrall that we have now, but a few key factors about this build of Vlad was that Thrall cap was actually significantly higher than it was on release. And the key difference was, enemies inflicted will explode on death. Basically, the ability was a more Walmart version of Molecular Prime, albeit being his first ability. His second ability is largely the same. And his third ability was a Mist Wall, which is also close to the same as we have now, but it did not shed status effects. However, come to Vlad's ultimate, it was very different. Vlad creates a huge area of mist and puts all enemies to sleep in radius. Afflicted enemies from his first ability will provide health and energy once they are killed. Now that was not expected. Yeah, this whole kit was looking pretty solid thematically. However, things changed. Devstream 113 and Vlad was given some tweaks and changes. Instead of being a more CC-focused controller frame, he was given changes to make him do more damage. His first ability will no longer have enemies explode, but instead will create beacons of sentient energy. And if enemies come into contact, they take damage. The enemy cap for casting the ability was stated to be around 20 or so. His second ability was unchanged as well as his third, and now his new ultimate. Launch lasers, and you can just kind of go nuts, and you can hold, you can hold, yeah, you can hold Lots your right. Yes. Pretty wicked. So it's very similar to Mesa in that if you hold down the left mouse button or right trigger by default, it does more concentrated damage values. Now, in all honesty, this was a big upgrade compared to the old mist he had. But from the looks of it on this stream, it felt like the 4th was just slapped on to make Revenant more sentient themed without thinking about how it can relate with his first 3 powers. Now not every frame needs synergy like Nidus or Harrow, but each ability should at least make some sense being together thematically. Revenant's new ultimate did make sense from an Eidolon's perspective, but the real question was, would this work out in his kit? Or would it just be a tacky add-on? Well, we're going to find out soon enough. And come August 24th of 2018, Revenant was born. So after the whole roller coaster of development we just saw with Revenant, he was finally released, and he was kinda average at best. Enthrall was limited to the puny cap of just four enemies, whereas the dev build was shown to have a way higher cap. It was a better version of Nyx's mind control, but it was still not functional enough. Mesmer skin had no gating, and there was no way to recast the ability. They removed it during development as it was too OP. You also couldn't regenerate the stacks. Rolling Guard wasn't a mod yet, so you were left vulnerable after the stacks expired. And also, we didn't have shield gating, so once those stacks went up, you were basically dead. Reef was very expensive and was a worse version of Tidal Surge. It didn't even shed status effects or let you regenerate Mesmer stacks. Reef also had a flat direction, so you couldn't even move left or right while in it. And Dance Macabre was the strongest ability Revenant had. It did high damage and cleared rooms easily, but that was it. It was good, but it wasn't worth using the overshield bonus since Mesmer skin protected you anyways. There was very little synergy and functionality between these abilities, and as a result, Revenant came off as a very average DPS frame that was janky at best. He was good for the mid game, and that was kind of it. He definitely needed more work, and thankfully DE noticed and took action very quickly. Patch 23.6 saw Enthrall get boosted to a new cap of 7. 
not bad. And Dez Macabre unfortunately saw a nerf, so his energy cost was increased to 20 per second at base. However, this wasn't enough, obviously, so come past 23.8, we got more buffs and an overhaul. Now, Thralls who die will have their Death Pillar shootout attacks as well as explode if hit by Dance Macabre, dealing radius damage. Mesmer Skin can now be recharged, which finally gave this ability the quality of life it needed. Unfortunately, Mesmer Skin did not protect you from self damage until September 27th of 2018, where it was finally fixed to deplete your health to 2 HP. Still, not ideal, but at least made Tonkor usable with Revenant. And Wreath got the biggest rework. Its energy cost was finally lowered to 50, and Revenant is now fully immune to damage while Reaving. When Reaving thralls with Mesmer Skin active, it also now restores a charge. And when Reaving allies with Mesmer Skin, it adds the protective energy to your allies as well. When Reave is casted while in Dance Macomb, the energy cost is lowered to 25, which allows for quicker, risk-free placement of Revenant for tactical maneuvering. And the direction of Reave now follows the aim reticle, which makes casting more responsive to intent. These were also good changes that did push Revenant forward, but come past 23.10 is where Reave finally got its Jet Status Effect mechanic, which was a much needed boost. And now, Revenant, after a lot of fixes, was in a very solid place. He wasn't a world beater, but he was in a comfortable spot on the roster and had his uses. Rolling Guard also further boosted his tank capabilities as recasting Mesmer Skin was even easier. And as a result, Revenant became one of the tankiest frames in the game. Enemies also had no overguard at the time, so everything that hits you went to sleep. Reeve allowed Revenant to recharge his skin, but it was easier to just roll and recast and it was cheaper. And going forward, Revenant just became unkillable. His ultimate was strong for the time and did his job. However, despite these buffs and updates to Revenant, there wasn't really any content that required him to be used. Because his other abilities were average at best, all Revenant offered was tank. There were no liches, no sisters. Arbitration did see some use, but that game mode didn't get its rework until way later on. No steel path either, and all Revenant could do is simply tank. He couldn't boost damage in any way. His 1 was gimmicky and his 3 was nice, but was still overshadowed by Rolling Guard. His 4 was solid for DPS, but was outclassed by Equinox, Saren, and Mesa in that department. Revenant also can scale as high as he can now because his Mesmer skin had no innate gating. However, come Heart of Deimos, Revenant was about to unleash a new storm. Now prior to Deimos, we did get update 27.2, which was Warframe Revisited. In this update, we got a big rework to Railjack, changes to armor and scaling, as well as elemental updates. And more importantly, the removal of self-damage. Instead, we got the self-stagger mechanic. This means that all launcher-based weapons wouldn't delete you anymore. For many frames, this was a blessing, but the new stagger effect made said weapons a bit janky to use. So instead, players ran frames like Nasia or Rhino to offset the change, or used the updated Prime Sure Footed as now its effect was useful as Knockdown's Resist affected self-staggers. So with this mod, you can never stagger yourself now. But what does Revenant have to do with this? Simple. Mesmer Skin. Mesmer Skin prevented Self Stagger. And now that launcher based weapons became more powerful and more prominent in the meta, Revenant saw huge attraction because he had a free rechargeable Prime Sure Footed. And as a result, everyone started to use Revenant if they didn't have PSF. Arbitrations also got its rework too just a bit before in update 25.7.6, and with the next update for it in 30.5, Revenant saw more use due to his ease of use and tank capabilities. The new shield gating also helped him out, as you would have a more clear indicator if your stacks ran out instead of dying outright. The arcane rework also helped him become an even stronger weapons platform. And finally, come Heart of Deimos, the subzoom launched and released Revenant from his chains. Now you can replace any ability, other than Mesmer Skin, and give yourself a huge damage boost, essentially turning Revenant into a tankier version of Rhino that can buff his own damage as well. And the new Tenet weapons were also great with Revenant and his newfound damage buffs from other abilities. 
the Zaramon Arcanes also further boosted Mesmer Skin as getting 40% more strength was valuable on some builds. And finally, the big one in update 30.2. Mesmer Skin now gains a 1 second immunity period every time a stack is depleted, thus giving Mesmer Skin gating, which was a huge boost to his survivability, as up until this point, you had to pay close attention to the shield stacks, but now with the gating mechanic implemented, you had a much easier time keeping up the stacks, and you kept them up for a longer period of time as well. Pair this with Reeve and Enthrall allowing you to regenerate your stacks, you became truly immortal as Revenant. Revenant had the subsume system to boost his gun damage. Revenant had Mesmer skin to protect him from all knockdowns and staggers, thus bypassing the sure-footed requirement. Revenant was able to regenerate his skin stacks, as well as now with the Archon shards, Revenant became a complete beast of a Warframe. He was able to essentially out-tank Hildren, Rhino, and Anaros, and can scale so nicely into high-level missions thanks to the constant power creep and new additions and tools. Revenant became legendary. And if you thought he stopped there, oh hell no. Just two weeks ago, we saw Revenant ascend once again. Mesmer Shield now giving Revenant three more stacks of Mesmer Skin, as well as applying five stacks of skin to every ally within Affinity Radius. And this can be refreshed again and again. Revenant became a god. Okay, now I just said that Revenant was incredibly powerful because he can never die, his kit is still strange. Let me explain. You see, everything is oriented around Mesmer Skin, right? That's his main go-to ability, it's the reason why Revenant is so good in the first place. The buffs and changes to Enthrall and Reeve are nice, and Dance Macop is a good damage ability for anything under level 120, but Revenant's whole ability and design is still kind of bizarre. It's not bad, far from it. It works, but it still feels a bit weird. First off, Revenant's passive is literally useless. Feels like Rhino all over again. Revenant is immune to the magnetic proc on planes water at night, which makes sense since he's derived from the Eidolons. Sure, it's kind of useless, but at least it makes sense from his design's perspective. But his second passive, it's not looking too good. Revenant emits a 100 damage radial blast that knocks down enemies within 7.5 meters. Why is this a problem? Well, you see, Mesmer Skin prevents all damage in the first place, which just invalidates this passive entirely. I get it, it's just a passive, so it's not a big deal. However, it would have been nice to see something else, or something a bit more interesting. Revenant's first ability is Enthrall, and it's essentially Nyx's mind control, but infinitely better. Revenant will take over an enemy and have them fight for him. The Thralls gain instant aggression from all enemies, so it's a great CC ability. And when your converted enemy attacks new enemies, they also become a Thrall as well, so spreading Thrall isn't a big deal. And with all these Thralls at your disposal, you can use Reeve to dash into them, dealing scaling damage as well as regenerating your own Mesmer skin which is fantastic. If a Thrall also dies, they will emit a pillar of energy and will damage any enemy that comes too close as well as shooting out projectiles. Enthrall has a max cap of 7 and the duration is boosted by duration, cast range by range, and can be sped up with casting speed mods or shards. However, Enthrall possesses two major issues. The first is, it's only really effective if you're alone. It's very hard to get your thralls up in his squad because, well, everyone else is gonna murder them. Thus, it's incredibly frustrating trying to get your thralls up when everything just dies for 90% of missions and teams. You are never going to get your thralls up outside of endless missions like survival, but even then, people are going to instantly murder them because of how absurd power creep has gotten. This isn't Revenant's fault entirely, it's just the game shift has now moved from a control focus to damage. And even during his release, this was still a prominent issue with Enthrall. Now, it's fine for solo, so I can give it a pass. However, the second problem is... Thralls will reduce your damage per second too. You see, when you enthrall a mob, it becomes an ally. And because of that, you lose out on damage because certain arcanes, mods, and mechanics stop working. 
Galvanized mods do not work on thralls. The primary and secondary arcanes also don't work as well. And snipers also lose combo and will register a miss if you shoot a thrall, which is ridiculous. Thralls shouldn't be counted as an ally if they can still take damage from me and my allies, and the fact that I lose out on DPS against thralls is not good. Another gimmicky part with the thralls is the whole enthrall plus reef combo to regenerate stacks of mesmer skin, which is genuinely useful if you're alone. Because in a squad, it's very hard to get the thralls up and running so you can reef into them since as soon as you try to enthrall something, it's going to get murdered in an instant from a teammate, which is really frustrating. And the fact that mesmer skin gains a 1 second immunity period per stack disintegrating, it means you can freely recast mesmer skin without worrying about dying, which is a whole a lot easier than using Thrall plus Reeve. Enthrall also has one augment called Thrall Pact, which is fantastic, but again, it faces the dilemma that the ability itself has, which is fighting against your own team. And not only that, if you own any damage boosting arcane or galvanized mod, they do the same thing but infinitely better. Now, you can also enthrall enemies for free if they hit your Mesmer skin, but the max thrall cap is 7, so unless you're cycling your thralls, this synergy is kind of worthless. And again, in a squad, this won't work that well. However, it is free, so at the very least, there's that. Now, what about Reeve, you might say? Well, it's great. It's a good mobility ability that can shed status effects and regenerate defenses, as well as Mesmer stacks. The problem is, why do I need to steal shields and health when they never go down in the first place? Mesmer skin already has a gating mechanic, so why would I need to steal defenses when I never lose them? Also, just rolling and recasting with rolling guard is significantly easier and faster. I mean, at the very least, it can shed status effects, so it's good regardless and it's a very easy mobility ability. And if you do so happen to tackle a Thrall, you get stacks back. But unfortunately, you don't get any excess stacks, so the ability is mainly used to keep your stacks active for as long as possible, and the damage it has when tackling a Thralled enemy is good. However, with so much power creep and amazing weapons, it's still kind of hard to justify using this as a damage ability when your guns do the exact same thing without using energy. Now you can also reef with Dance Macabre, but people usually subsume Dance Macabre out, so a large portion of builds don't get to use the synergy it has with that ability, but on its own, it's still a fine ability. However, once again, it's been outclassed by Mesmer Skin alone, because Mesmer Skin is just that powerful. It's so good that it's invalidating Revenant's other abilities and functionalities. Again, I'm not saying Reeve is bad, I'm just saying the functionality it has with Mesmer Skin feels redundant in most situations. Reeve also has one augment called Blinding Reeve, which gives Reeve 40% more range. And this range bonus is nice, but the augment also blinds enemies who are affected by the fog. Which is kind of useless since Mesmer Skin already provides great CC anyways. Okay, well, what about Dawn's Macabre? Well, it's good until you unlock the subzoom system. Then you're going to replace it. On its own, it is a good ability and will murder anything under level 100 no problem. For the entire base star chart, it will destroy everything in sight. It's a very potent ability. The damage Dance Macabre has is special because it will adapt to whatever it's hitting, so it's super effective damage against all enemies it hits. Revenant also sweeps in a massive 100 meter radius at base, so the range is really big. And the damage can be increased even more if you hold the trigger to expend more damage at the cost of more energy consumption. The beams also have punch through, which lets it bypass some obstacles in the environment, and Revenant can use Reeve to blink to locations easier, so your movement really isn't that impaired. There is some synergy here. When killing enthralled enemies with Dance Macabre, they drop an overshield orb, which gives you overshields, which allows you to tank easy during the ability animation, and any damage reflected by Mesmer Skin will accumulate into Dance Macabre, which lets you deal a ton of damage and lets this ability scale very nicely. And any beams that hit a thrall pillar will explode dealing radius damage. Now this all sounds fantastic, but once again, why? Mesmer Skin prevents damage, so the overshields are pointless. For allies, it may be useful, but shield gating is a thing for everybody, 
and while well, simply murdering everything in sight is also a great way to protect the allies. Plus, everyone's got the good old operator mode, so the team aspect of this mechanic feels redundant as well. Another problem is the beams do damage but locks me into the animation where I cannot use my other weapons. Also, the Thrall Pillar synergy only works if I have a Thrall active, which we stated earlier was difficult to do in a team, and only effective alone. And even on solo, it's just not worth the hassle as shooting into a horde of enemies will get the job done way faster and at zero energy cost. And using Reef with this ability is great if the ability is even on in the first place. You see, the problem that Revenant has is that he has one very strong ability that lets him become immortal, but the other abilities feel kind of tacky or are just add-ons that try to improve the quality of life of Mesmer skin when in reality there isn't a reason to try and do that. Take a look at Rhino for example. Some could argue that he's in similar vein, right? But that's not the case, because Rhino's other abilities are still very solid on their own, and he isn't a frame that's only about tanking. It is effective to use Ironclad Charge to make Rhino Charge and Skin work together nicely. It's not tacky or gimmicky or janky, it's genuinely effective and doesn't interrupt squad play. Reinforcing Stop allows instant generation of Iron Skin and it's a lot easier to use than having to thrall things and reef through them. Stomp is also an excellent CC ability on its own as well, and it's also the strongest CC in the entire game. Rhino doesn't have any weird or janky interactions with Iron Skin. Despite Iron Skin being weaker than Mesmer Skin, Rhino has more functionality between his four abilities than Revenant does. The actual synergies that Charge and Stomp have with Iron Skin is smooth and it's effective and it doesn't interrupt team play, and it also doesn't contradict Iron Skin in any way. Whereas with Revenant's Enthrall plus Reeve, it feels somewhat forced and unnecessary. Why are these abilities trying to improve Mesmer Skin, when Mesmer Skin is already busted on its own? Instead, Enthrall should be improved so it's easier to use, has its bugs fixed, and flows smoother with Revenant's kit. Reeve is fine on its own, and Don's Macabre should be fixed and overhauled so it gives actual benefits that don't contradict Revenant himself. Again, Revenant does not need overshields when he cannot take damage in the first place. However, with all of that said, at the end of the day, I have to give credit where it's due. Revenant is still really good, and the fact that he's such an easy frame to obtain now that his prime is out, new players have such an incredible warframe at their disposal. A frame that tanks, regenerates defenses, and provides a huge radius of amazing damage is still excellent, despite everything I've said. And that's currently where Revenant sits at. He's excellent early on when you don't have the tools to deal with enemies quickly, but later on he becomes a weapons platform that just… tanks. Anyways, that's gonna be it for me. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more in the future, then be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Your support is greatly appreciated. Let me know your thoughts about Revenant down below, and I will see you guys next time.